Hello, welcome to another episode of Careers by Kelly podcast. I am your host, Kelly Jackson. Super excited that you are here. If you are watching us via YouTube, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you click that notification bell so that you know every single time we upload a new podcast. If you're listening on the podcast, I appreciate you. Make sure that you download the podcast. Download your favorite episode. Take us with you on your walk, on your run, while you're cooking, while you're driving. We would love to take a ride with you. (laughs) Super excited that you're here. Listen, we're going to get into this. We are in a series right now, the future of work, the future of work. So if you uh, are just now joining us, if you didn't catch the replay, um, the episode, I should say, from last week where we talked about the different types of um, of work in the future. You want to check that out. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll place that around here somewhere so you can check that out. You want to check that out because it lays a foundation. It helps gives you clarity on what type of work works for you in the future, right? Based off of the stage you are in in your career, the phase you're in in your life. Once you get that clarity, you can start to build upon that. All right. So make sure you check that out. In today's episode, we're going to talk about your skills, the skills for the future. So we're going to break down relevant skills, right? Upskilling versus reskilling and the automation of skills. So we'll talk about those three segments uh, in today's episode. So let's get started. All right, we're going to kick this off with relevant skills. And the reason why I wanted to kick this off is because I talk to so many people and I see so many documents, resumes, LinkedIn profiles, uh, outreach messages that share skills that aren't relevant in today's market. You want to think about what you do, right? You want to think about not when you first got that job, not that job description that you received when you first got that job, I would be willing to bet, and I'm not a betting person, (laughs) I would be willing to bet that your job has evolved and or changed throughout the years from when you first got that job, right? So that means if you're just uh, copying your job description and putting that on your LinkedIn profile or taking some bullet points and putting that on your resume, you want to be careful. You want to be careful because when decision makers and recruiters take a look at that, right, it may not be what they're seeking because it may not be what's relevant in the market today. So that's one thing. You want to be mindful that you're not uh, copying or, 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 or holding on to what you did when you first got that job. Let it go. Let it go because your role has evolved. The scope of work, the type of work that you do, those bullet points that you put on your resume, that has evolved. It's changed. And, and you may even uh, do additional work that's, that wasn't even on the job description in the beginning to begin with. Right. These are some of the things that you want to think about the relevancy of the work that you do now versus when you first started. So let it go. What you did when you first got that job, let that go. Let's talk about what you're doing now. Right. The relevancy, what's relevant, what's in the market now. And the way to do this is uh, take your skills. Right. Everything that you're doing now, you may have learned some new skills since you've been in that role, especially if you've been in the role for a number of years. And if you haven't kept track of track of that, you want to get a career journal, write down just a journal just for your career, right? And I had I had one uh, around here and I can show you what that looks like, but just a journal, just a journal, right? Write down 
things that you do, maybe you worked on a tool, you were trained on a tool or certified in something, write that down so you can put that on your documents now. And when those decision makers, and even if you're currently working and you're looking to be promoted, right, you can speak to what you've learned and how those skills translate or easily transfer into a new role, a promotion, maybe a leadership role. Maybe there's some leadership skills. Maybe you led a project. Maybe you worked on a, um, a, a stretch project or you helped your manager or supervisor with something. All of that is relevant to where you want to go in the future, right? This is what you wanna put in your career journal. So we're talking about relevant skills. You don't wanna have antiquated or old uh, tools or software or even jargon in your industry on your documents. You don't wanna talk about that you were a secretary and now they don't even use the term secretary. They call them, they call um, executive assistants or administrative assistants. You don't want to say that you were, um, I don't know, working on a tool, uh, uh, COBOL, right? In the tech world, right? Something that they don't use any longer. So check your, and if you haven't updated it, that those, uh, terms may still be on that resume. You may be thinking, oh, I need to update and you may be thinking well i need to add additional job on there but go through and look at the terms have you changed the jargon the language on there the tools the software so make sure there's relevancy on all of your professional documents right even if you're currently working right no one knows what you do if you don't share it if you don't talk about it even with their boss, or if you're uh, looking for a promotion, how do they know what you do? How do they know what you've learned? How do they know, especially if you've been there over seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, they already have a perception of you because you're there for that long. But if you have been and you've learned additional skills and other tools, other software, other leadership qualities, how do they know? These are some of the things that go into your career journal. And then you take that and you transfer that information onto your professional documents. All right. So we were talking about relevant skills, right? Let's move on. Let's talk about upskilling versus reskilling, right? If you're looking for, again, a promotion, an internal movement, or transitioning in your career, going into a new industry, going into a new role, uh, doing a different type of work, scope of work all together, you may want to think about upskilling. Upskilling is when you take what you have. Maybe you don't want to move. Upskilling is when you don't want to move. You want to stay in your current role, but you want to get additional skills to help you leverage the skills that you currently have. For instance, if you're currently in a role and you want to become a director, Let's say you're a marketing manager right now and you want to become a marketing director. What skills do you need in order to get to that role? Right. That's upskilling. Maybe you don't have um, I don't know. Maybe you don't have uh, um, uh, you haven't um, led a team before. Maybe you, you haven't uh, managed a team before and you need that in order to go to a director level role. So then you raise your hand for a project where you're the lead of the team. You take that skill set now and you transfer that onto your document. So then you can go and apply internally to that role because now you've upskilled and you've acquired those skills that will help to better position you to get that role. If you are a, a financial analyst and you want to become a CFO, what skills do you need to upskill in order to get that role, right? Have you handled million dollar budgets before? Maybe you've only handled budgets under six figures. How do you get that knowledge? How do you acquire that knowledge? What type of upskilling do you require in order to get to that role? How, what do you have to do? And I'll say this, sometimes I have a client right now who just did this and he has three offers on the table because he took a step back to get what he needed 
to get to where he wants to go. Sometimes you may have to take a step down. Oh, you know what? I need to go back and get this skill and then I can, I'll go and get that promotion. So upskilling means I don't want to go to a new industry. I don't necessarily want to go into a new role. I don't want to do different type. I mean, a different type of work. I want to say, I want to do the same type of work. I just want to um, elevate in my current position. That's what upskilling is. Let's talk about reskilling. That means you want to do something all together, different. Reskill, right? Do again. That's what re means. Like, like repeat. Re means do it again. So you acquired some skills already. Now you want to do it again and get a different set of skills. Maybe you're doing, you're working as that financial analyst. You want to work in HR. So you want to reskill. What set of skills do you have now that's transferable into the HR realm? You worked in finance. How does that help you in HR? So you want to reskill. That's what reskilling means. So take a look at where you are. Do you need to upskill? Right? For the future. Again, based off of where you are currently in your life, where you are currently in your career. What do you need to do next? Do I need to reskill? Does that mean that I also need additional education or certification? You have to decide where you are. And again, check out the video uh, or episode. If you're listening to me, uh, if you're watching me, on YouTube, we'll put it up here somewhere. Check that out first to determine where you are. You have to have a, a roadmap of where, where you're going, right? To get to your destination, right? You don't show up at the airport and don't and have all your bags packed and don't know where you're going. You don't get in the car and and and, and not where you know where you're going. You put the GPS on, right? To 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 lead and to guide you. If you need guidance, if you need that roadmap, if you need to flesh this out and get a strategic plan, a step-by-step -step easy plan to follow, then you could definitely reach out to me or go right now to attractopportunities.com. There's a training video on transitioning and there's also a way for us to connect um, right there inside of that training video, attractopportunities.com. You can go there, but you need to know where you are in order to know where you're going. That's how transformation happens. So get clarity, get clear on where you are. So we talked about the relevant skills, right? We talked about upskilling and reskilling. The final thing we're going to talk about is the automation of skills. The shelf life of a skill is 2.5 years. This was as of, I believe, 2019, right? And so... If the shelf life, think of the shelf life, think about a can of peas on the shelf when you go to the store and you look on it and you look at the shelf life, you look at the date to make sure that they haven't expired, right? The same is true for your skills. What is the shelf life of your skills? The typical shelf life of a skill is 2.5 years. That's not a lot of time, my friend. That ain't a lot of time. So when it comes to automating a skill, you look at what skills you have that can be automated or have already been automated. I'll give you an example. In recruiting, when I started recruiting, they used to call us full life cycle recruiters. You don't hear that anymore. If you've never heard of it, it's because they don't really say that anymore. That's because that job has now changed over the years. It has evolved. It's chopped up. <laughs> it's a bit in pieces now. Some people do this part of it now. A machine, an applicant tracking system, hello, does the screening for us now. We used to have to do that on our own. Now, think about your job. What can a robot, a machine, artificial intelligence, machine learning, what can they do right now 
to streamline that process. Ain't nobody trying to take away no job from you. That's not what this is. Companies need to go faster. They're trying to beat their competition. It ain't about you. So what you want to do is take a look at your skills. Take a look at them. Think about what you used to do 10, 15, 5, 7, 8, 3 years ago that you don't do now. Apply that same principle to what you're doing now and think about it for the future. What will be gone? Do you have skills that you can transfer and trans, uh, translate into something else? We're talking about the automation of skills here. This is up to you. This is your career. This is something you're responsible for. If you're not on top of it, do not expect your manager, your supervisor, your director to be on top of it and tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, do you want a promotion? It don't work that way. You have to take care of your skills. Now, I'm going to drop a tool. If you're listening to this, look in the show notes. There's going to be a tool. It's called Career Explorer. If you're on YouTube, we'll put this in the description box. And it's by LinkedIn. You can use that tool and type in your skills and it will tell you one. Actually, I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you another one. I'm going to give you another, you can look at that one, but I'm going to give you another one that does it even better. It's actually a tool out of Australia, excuse me. And it actually does a better job of telling you what percentage of your current role or the work that you do will uh, or, or can be automated. And I think it's just good information. And uh, I got to look for it because this was a, about a year or so ago that I saw this. But check the show notes, show notes if you're listening to me um, uh, via the podcast. And if you're on YouTube, we'll put it in the description. I have to find it, but I'll, I'll, put, it, I'll put it down there. But it gives you um, a percentage of uh, what part of your job can and will be or could be automated. And this is something that you want to be mindful of. And you can think about this. You can think about, you know what, this right here, somebody, a, a robot or or a, 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 a system can do. This could be systematized. This could be this could be streamlined a little better. And, and listen, let me tell you this. If you're not thinking about it, I will guarantee you that your employer is thinking about it. So get ahead of the curve, right? We're talking about the future. We're talking about where you are currently in your career and in, in your life, right? We're, we're talking about figuring out where you are now, what you need to be focused on for the future, the future of your skills, all right? And so take a look if you haven't already, if you're listening to this, listen to the episode before again to lay that foundation so that you're clear, you have clarity on the type of work that you want to do. Then think about what we talked about here today in terms of the skills, right? Your relevancy of the skills, upskilling or reskilling, if that's something you need to do. And then the automation of skills, right? And I'll give you some tools as well to, um, to check out and make sure uh, that you at least know, right? Kind of where you are in terms of the percentage of the uh, skills that can be automated. All right. All right. Stay locked in. If you're on YouTube, make sure you are subscribed, click that notification bell. That way, you know, every single time that a video is uploaded. And this is so that you can prepare yourself for the future of work. The best thing that you can do for yourself is to stay prepared, right? So that you don't have to get prepared. That's what happened during the pandemic. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people had to get prepared on the spot because they didn't see things coming. You're not going to be that way because you're going to go through this playlist and you're going to take action on all these different um, tools and um, uh, considerations that we're sharing with you. All right. So stay tuned. Uh, we're going to talk next week on the different types. I believe it's about the different types of jobs for next week. So make sure you check that out, check that out and I'll see you on the next episode.